hey everyone welcome back to my channel i am so happy to be back oh my goodness and thank you 140 subscribers yay thank you so much i truly appreciate that you did not have to subscribe to this channel but you did and i thank you um so it's been a while man i don't even know how to dance anymore <laughs> it's been a while how long has it been i have no idea how long it's been my last video was um, Trimester 3, of course, part 2, so if you haven't seen that, make sure you go view it, like it, comment, and share. So, um, I actually just finished a video for my church, uh, Joshua's Generation. I am the youth president, so uh, today we talked about um, healing belongs to you and how uh, Isaiah 53 says, verse 5, like the latter portion of verse 5 says, um, with his stripes you are healed so basically the lord was just letting us know that in pain during pain during heartache during physical psychological spiritual pain healing is right there too healing accompanies you in your pain in your heartache and whatever you're going through so i thought i'd hop on uh for a few minutes before i have to go um so let me fix this i wrote down um some lessons because i knew i wouldn't be able to do videos every single day um or every week for that matter because your girl is in school y'all i have i'm in my am i in my last year this is my third year um next year i get to do practicum so i have six more classes left y'all i'm so tired of school i really am <laughs> i am burnt out i am ready to be done i have loved it i thank you jesus for allowing me to go back to school i asked you you answered my prayer now I'm ready to come on out. Okay. So I wrote down these lessons so I wouldn't forget. And hopefully I'll be able to talk about two of them um, today. So the first one I would like to talk about is, let's see, where, where did I write it? So basically, I'll just read what it, what it says here. It says, lessons from the king. This is the third lesson. God showed me why it was me that had to come with my parents to California this last time prayerfully. So um, I'm sure I've shared in my previous videos that my family and I, we were homeless and you know, that's another story. Um, and so the Lord finally allowed us to move back here to California from Virginia. And um, let's see if I remember. So I was accepted into a university and then my parents were like, oh, we're moving to California. And I was like, me too. <laughs> so um, uh, my sister stayed and then I came with them. And I I felt like this in re retrospect, thinking about it presently. I, um, I think that I wanted to come back because I wanted to make my wrongs white, right. I wanted to make my wrongs right. I wanted to be more dedicated to my parents. I wanted to show them that I'm dedicated to being respectful to you all, to love you, to honor you, to cherish you. Just like the Bible says, honor your mother and father so your days will be long on this earth. Um, and I just wanted to do better. I wanted a fresh start. I wanted to have a better life. I was tired of living in the state we were in. Um, yeah. <laughs> so... I came back with them. I wanted to be in the promised land. This is California is our promised land. I wanted to be a part of what God was doing in my parents' life. I just wanted I just wanted to be in the Lord's will. Honestly. I was like, Lord, you said we can move back to California. I'm going, okay? I'm not staying here. I'm not gonna be out of your will. I am leaving this place. Um and so, um, so we're here now. And one day I was um, in my apartment at school uh, about a few months ago. And actually I had taught, a, was it, yeah, I taught a Joshua's generation on Joseph. And um, let's see, what was my lesson? Um, I think I was just talking about like, oh man, I don't remember. But anyways, I was talking about Joseph. Or was it, Mo no, it was Joseph. <laughs> It was Joseph. And I said, Lord, because the Lord was talking to me, through, that video was powerful. And I pray that the people that viewed that, um, they were blessed too. 
Um, so basically what the Lord was saying, I was like, Lord, can you please confirm this? I know you're speaking, but I need a confirmation, uh, as well. So, um, I got on my phone and I saw that someone preached a similar message that I had t just taught in Joshua Generations. I was like, thank you, Jesus, this is my confirmation. And so, um, this pastor was preaching about Joseph and he was explaining how it had to be Joseph to endure all of that, to be sold, to be, um, imprisoned, to be forgotten, to be betrayed by Potiphar's wife. It had to be Joseph. Um... And what I wrote down is that what the pastor said is he, the Lord knew that I would allow my heart to change. So um, when I was younger, y'all, I was a very disobedient person. Not afraid to say it now because I've been delivered. I was a typical teenager, typical adolescent, impulsive, disrespectful, said the, the first thing that came out of my, said the first thing that popped into my mind didn't care if I hurt people. I mean, I, I had some empath empathy. I had a conscience. I knew that sometimes I would hurt people. But you know how when you're a teenager, you're just like, you just blurt out everything. And then you're like, oh, man, sorry. I was just disrespectful to my parents. And um, and I, I wasn't like antisocial. Like I didn't, I wasn't like a person that was just like out to get people. I was just being a bad teenager. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to say bad. I was I was being a a teenager who um, succumbed to what the enemy wanted me to do sometimes and what I wanted to do sometimes, just like every other teenager. Um, and so I, I I looked at my life. I was like, I don't want to be this way anymore, Lord. I know some behavior is typical of adolescent brain. You know, adolescents our brain is not. Uh, well, I'm not adolescent anymore, but. <laughs> An adolescent's brain is not fully developed yet, so what is developed, highly developed, is our emotional part of our brain. So that's what causes us to be very impulsive and to act on our emotions and to be moody and to be hungry and tired. Um, so that stuff was typical, but the other stuff like lying and being disrespectful to my parents and um, just not being obedient to the Lord, that's not normal. So I wanted to change all of that. And I, I wanted to, the Lord to know that I want to be better and I want to do better. And this is related to singlehood because, uh, and um, getting in a romantic relationship with your God-given partner. Um, because we want to make sure that anything in our heart, anything that we have, become that has become a habit, that is destructive we need to make sure we get rid of that and like i said before we're not going to be perfect when we meet our spouse we're not going to know what to do all the time but if there are some things that you can work on now and get rid of now um do that <laughs> work on that ask the lord to show you some things that is in your heart uh, in your spirit that is not conducive for this rela relationship so your relationship can go smoothly um, if you can still tell I'm, I'm still single y'all it's, it's, uh, it's been several months I'm still single um, I'm still pursuing the Lord still trusting him I, I went through a, a moment where um, I was like okay Lord I feel myself reverting back to hating being single help me Jesus give me strength give me courage give me give me peace um, and I think it's because like so I went into school and I wasn't like um, as dedicated that I that I was able to be over the summer because you know how you're in school you're very busy I'm not saying we're too busy for the Lord but you were very busy I find myself uh, not as dedicated as I can be over the summer uh, I am reading my Bible every night I am praying I'm seeking the Lord's face I'm watching my parents uh, uh, preach the word online um, so I'm still a dedicated servant of the Lord but um, sometimes it, it just um, it, it just changes your behavior changes your schedule changes um, so I felt myself reverting reverting back to that person of hating singlehood and I 
been asking the Lord to help me. So I'm good. <laughs> I'm good now. Um, so back to this lesson. Um, so moving back to California was hard. It was a serious struggle. We drove here. That in itself was hard. Um, yeah, that's really hard, y'all. Driving from Virginia to California in a truck, like an SUV with two turtles, a dog, parents, everything in the back seat is brutal. It's cool. I mean, you get to see the landscape, get to see what the Lord has created. You get to shower in a, um, in a like elite gas station, you get to stay. I don't think we ever stayed in a hotel. Um, you get to eat, try different foods and, and you know, all that is cool, but you get claustrophobic uh, <laughs> uh, at a certain point and you get irritated. Um, so that was hard, but thank the Lord for his strength and endurance because we needed it. Um, and then when we got here, uh, it was still hard. We did not have a home. <sighs> Help me, Jesus. Take a break. Okay, practicing um, mindfulness. That That's another video. Because this topic is triggering. So know where your triggers are and take a break. So, um... So we got here, uh, we stayed with family, sorry, we stayed with friends, we stayed in hotels, we stayed in motels, we, we had a storage, we had a whole bunch of things, uh, and it was just really hard. The Lord was with us, God provided for us, he kept us safe, he fed us, he clothed us, he took care of us, but we were still struggling. Um, still suffering. Who? Okay. It's okay that you're still triggered because that means you're alive. Um, God is a deliverer. All right. So, um, back to this lesson. So the, the way I learned that I had to endure all of that, um, is because I looked at Joseph's story and Joseph, um, as we know, was the proper child. <laughs> he was perfect. Um, his parents felt that uh, he was perfect. They they taught him things that they didn't teach his, his brothers. They spent time with him. They poured into him, um, made him a coat that, he, that his brothers didn't receive. Um, so he was um, uh, well taken care of by his parents, um, his father mostly. Uh, Jacob um, and then all that changed and he was sold by his brothers into slavery um, and I cannot imagine how traumatizing that is I can't imagine how betrayed he felt how frightened and scared he felt to think that he would be a slave and at the mercy of every master in his life that he could die at any moment or be or have food withheld from him at, at any moment that he could die of exhaustion or hunger at, at any moment I cannot imagine that um, I've been through my own experiences of hunger and exhaustion but not at, at that point um, but then he found favor in the Lord's sight and um, he was at the, the servants place I'm sorry the masters master's place and um they brought him inside of their home they saw how he was well taught and how educated he was and they trusted him but then something else happened Potiphar's wife was drawn away of her own lust and she wanted Joseph for herself and Joseph, the the man of God that he was, he was like, I'm sorry, I'm not doing that. So, no thanks. Um, and he, but he was thrown in jail. And so I, I was just just studying his journey from having his own safe home with his family, 
to go through slavery, to go to an unknown place, to have to do a type of work that he wasn't used to doing, to um, having favor with Potiphar and then with um, Pharaoh and then with other people there and how all of that led to him becoming, I hope I'm saying this right, a Pharaoh himself, becoming, a, let's just say a top person, <laughs> whatever level he was, becoming highly favored of the Lord. And so I compared that to my journey. Living in California, uh, let's just start in 2003. Living in California, my life was amazing. Uh, the Lord was with us. He was blessed. Not saying that we equate things with the Lord, but uh, his favor was, was on us. He was taking care of us and he, he um, kept his promises. And we were living the good life, y'all. And that's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> God wants us to be successful. He wants to give us the desires of our heart. He wants to give us what we need and what we ask for. So we were living it up <laughs> in California. Saved. Safely living it up. And then for a, how old was I? Did I start in middle school? Whatever. For a young child to lose her home and have most of her high school and some of college being homeless and then finally reaching a point where she has a home now, she's in school studying her favorite subject, has all this favor with her university and with with her colleagues with her um what do i have with some people managers <laughs> um and to look at that journey and, and i asked the lord lord did i yes i asked the lord why me why did i endure all that not like why like lord i didn't deserve that but why was my journey so specific? Why did I go through certain things? Why did I endure certain things? Why did you ask me to go through certain tests? And so the Lord was telling me that I went through all of that because he knew I could handle it. Because he knew that I would allow my heart to be changed, allow my heart to be molded. Oh, that's not the word to be shaping, um, allow my entire being to be changed for the good. He knew that I would be pliable. He knew that I would be workable and shapeable. He knew that I would allow him to put me on display, to allow me to suffer, to just go through things unimaginable. And sometimes I can't believe I survived all of that. I cannot believe that I survived all that trauma. <sighs> like you saw previously, I had a, a trigger moment where I had to stop and breathe uh, and realize that I'm not in that situation anymore, um, that I'm here now and I have my own YouTube channel. Look at Jesus, y'all. Look at him. He did it all. And so basically the point of this video is to realize that you're not just going through things just to be going through it. God knew you would accept the challenge. So he asked you to go through it. And in it, also, he knew that you would be workable and pliable. And, and that's exactly what we go through in relationships. When we are with someone, we're learning that person, we are being changed, their, their life is an example. Um, they, their behavior, their thoughts, the way they think, the way they do things is changing our perspective. We're realizing that there's more to life than what we thought. There's more to the way, um, how you think or the, how you travel or how you run a business or how you go to school or whatever. There's a different way of doing things. There's a different way to handle conflict. There's a different way to respond to pain or sickness or, or um, discomfort. There's a whole new world out there. And I appreciate the Lord for 
allowing me to go through all that, for asking me to go through it, for pushing me <laughs> to go through it, because he knew what kind of person I would emerge out as. I hope I said it right. He knew what kind of person I would be when I came out. And while I was watching this, this pastor preach this message, I was like, Lord, I am blown. I cannot believe that you knew that I would, I just love what he said. I, the Lord knew that I would allow my heart to change. The Lord knew that I would be able to endure it. The Lord knew that I had a heart for it. I honestly have come to the point where I can say, Lord, I'll go through anything for you because I've been through it all already. <laughs> I've been through so much that I don't mind saying right now, Lord, I will go through anything for you because I know in that situation, God is with me and he always comes through. He always gives me what I need in the situation. And he always helps me as I'm, when I'm out of the situation. So when my family and I got this home, um, I was still having a hard time because like it's, it's, it's trauma. So you're traumatized and you're, now I had to learn how to not live as a homeless person. Now I had to um, endure flashbacks and memories and being triggered and, and of course the enemy magnifying things. And I, I just, I just felt so tired and, and felt so uh, vulnerable and, and kind of weak and just like, what in the world did we just go through? Um, and not saying like I'm blaming the Lord. I, I appreciate. I'm so glad we went through all of that because now my name is written in heaven. <laughs> now Jesus can trust me just like when um, the Lord asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. And he went up there. That man, y'all, he took his son to that mountain to be sacrificed, to, to kill him. For Jesus to sit for for to be obedient to the Lord, and he took that dagger, was going to stab him, and then the angel, <laughs> and then the angel of the Lord said, "Don't do it, Abraham. Now I know that you love the Lord." Paraphrasing. Now I know that you'll be obedient. So I'm I'm so happy that the Lord knows that I will be obedient. But um, after we came out, I think I was oh well, I know that I was trying so hard to be over it, trying so hard to like be resilient, be strong like you made it. But I was having a really hard time because my program has a way of um, helping us to be in touch with our childhood and helping us to be to recognize um, when we've been hurt and um, different events and experiences. So all of that was coming out. And as a therapist, it's really important that we work on ourselves um, simultaneously while we're working with other individuals because what someone says might bring things up. I might have a client who, I think that looks like a bowl of it. Y'all, like my Christmas decorations. Anyways, um, what was I saying? Okay. As I might have a client who was homeless and they might say all this stuff and, and I might be triggered. So I need to make sure that I've worked on myself, forgiven my past, let it all go, um, put it all in Jesus' hands and be able to carry their their pain and, and provide counsel because that's my job. Um, <laughs> so... Um, So I was, I was trying so hard to get over it, trying so hard to be okay, trying so hard to be fine, but I wasn't fine and I was still having a hard time with uh, grappling with that. We just went through the most craziest time of, our, of my life and I kept thinking like, no, I didn't think we were going to go through it again. I know we're not going through it again, um, but it, it, it scared me and... Um, Sometimes I am afraid of bringing this into my relationship. Like, um, 
just different things like the weirdest things you wouldn't think would trigger you it triggers me um but thank the lord that i'm still working on that thank the lord that i'm definitely not where i was i'm not that same depressed person i'm not that same like inhibited person and like i said in previous videos man i've come so far thank you lord i'm not that person that um presents herself uh, as someone who is inhibited or less than or inferior and i don't think that i'm invisible anymore and i know that i'm loved i know that i'm cared for um so basically this lesson was <laughs> this video is crazy i'm going all over the place but anyways i hope that you're getting something out of this video know that it is important as a single person to work on your heart to look inside of your heart see what's in there that the lord needs to heal that the lord needs to mend um and help you to let go of so that we do not bring pain into our relationship or we should be entering a relationship whole honestly there should be two whole people coming into a relationship not two broken people not oh he's gonna um he's going to heal me or she's going to heal me i mean there will be certain things that you may develop in the relationship where um he does heal you from or she does heal you from um but all i'm saying is we really need to let go of baggage <laughs> i'm reading text messages we really need to let go of, of baggage let's enter our relationship y'all loving hard and i think that would be my next video because another lesson is the lord is ur urging me to have boundless love with no fear um so that's another video so stay subscribed y'all so you can hear um a description of that lesson um so know that you go through everything for a reason know that the lord knew you would be able to handle this but god knows us so much better than we know ourselves that middle schooler high schooler college student however old i was i definitely wasn't in college i was like probably just high school um if the lord uh asked me like will you be homeless for me i'll be like no <laughs> but he did it in such a way that he kind of like eased us into it <laughs> that sounds so horrible okay let's see if i can put it another way because i got two minutes basically the lord will never put more on you than you can bear you just have to trust me <laughs> the lord will ask you to go through certain things and he knows you're gonna say yes so you might as well just say yes in the beginning <laughs> he knows that you are going to do it and no you must know that you're able to endure it you must know that you're strong enough because god is with you you have everything that you need to endure that hardness to endure that hardship you are a soldier you are a mighty soldier in god so don't think that a test is too hard for you it's not too hard for you you can make it we can make it through this test of singlehood friends we can make it just keep saying it until you believe it we can make it through singlehood you are not alone you are not the only person single obviously you are not the only one feeling isolated over the holidays y'all the holidays are are um used to be extremely hard for me difficult for me now it's much less difficult for me i'm not saying that it's easy i'm just saying it's less a lot less difficult because i put my faith and trust in the lord i know that i'm going to get married i've already seen it the lord has already given me dreams and visions and said he's going to give me the desires of my heart and answer my prayers my parents have confirmed it the lord's given them visions and dreams and and scriptures and all that um so it's gonna happen happen for me and i'm praying for you as well i'm praying that you keep going i'm praying that you write down some lessons take this as an example anything that you're learning right now write it down so just like me in the future you look up you think about this you're like wow i've come so far 
and you're going to be so proud of yourself and you're going to be so happy about what God is doing in your life. So continue to abide in the word. If what is what's John 15, 7? Let's see. If my word abide in you and you abide in me, you can ask what you will and it will be given unto you. Man, I hope I got that right. Let's go to it. I should have it memorized by now. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Matthew, oh, sorry. John 15, 7. Yay! If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. So keep the faith, abide under the shadow of the Almighty, stay in God's word. If you can't, if you have no faith to speak, if you can't speak life, just read your Bible, y'all. I'm telling you, just read it. There have been times where, my Lord, I don't feel like praying. I don't want to believe you. I've said to the Lord, Lord, I don't want to believe you. I don't want you to say to me, a miracle is on the way. I don't want to hear that you are going to bless me. I don't want to hear it because... Obviously, it's not here. <laughs> so there have been times where I've just gotten down on my knees and just read the Bible. Just just started, uh, let's see, Matthew is a great place. Reading about the miracles of God. Acts is, is a good place. Psalms is definitely an encouraging place. So just read God's word. It, it will change your perspective, change your mindset, change your doubt into faith, change your faith fear into peace change your unbelieving into i believe god even though i can't see it right now so i love you all i'm praying for you keep the faith be safe this holiday se season pray for people this is a time where people uh, die by suicide where they kill their family members where they're shooting high schools and shooting colleges and, and overdosing so please pray for the souls of this world because the enemy is stealing them and we belong to the Lord the Bible says all souls belong to God and the enemy is stealing them so let's keep each other in prayer please be kind be compassionate be understanding and most importantly love the Lord thy God God bless you